Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with SRLounge.com. All right, guys, so we're going to go on and we're going to discuss the basic panel. Let me select an image. We're going to actually use this image right here, image 2 14, for our example image. I'm going to hit D to jump right to the develop module and we're gonna go through the basic panel. Now the first thing I'm gonna do, just for the purpose of these tutorials, you guys might like to actually work in this kind of manner, but what you wanna do is right click on the panels, we're gonna select this solo mode, and what that does is it makes sure that only one of these panels is open at any one point in time. Typically when I'm editing, I do like to have all of my panels open just so I can quickly navigate between them and select options, but for the purpose of this tutorial, it's kind of helpful to only see one thing at a time just to kind of reduce clutter. So I'm gonna have that solo mode selected, once again, each of these panels has a number and the basic panel shortcut is one. So to access it, to collapse or expand it, you just hit control one or command one on a Mac. So we're gonna expand it and we're gonna start from the very top, which is treatment. Now let's reset out this image just so in, in case there's any settings applied to it already, it goes back to how it was previously. Now at the very top we have treatment, which basically allows us to choose whether we want this image to be color or black and white. Now you can click on black and white here, which will automatically shift it, but the easiest way to toggle color versus black and white is just to hit V on your keyboard. V will automatically uh, toggle that color versus black and white back and forth, and it's the quickest way to go about it. Let's keep this image in color for now, because we're going to go through and kind of talk about each one of these settings. And the next section that we have in our basic panel are our temperature adjustments. So from here, the easiest way to adjust the temperature is just simply to dial it down. We can slide this slider down by mouse clicking on it and dragging it. We can go up as well. We can also just mouse over temperature and we can click up and down on the keyboard to move up and down. Now, clicking up and down is gonna move by small increments while holding shift and clicking up is gonna move by larger increments. Also, if you know the precise temperature, you can also just click to the right and dial in the exact temperature here. Remember that going left on temperature is going to go cooler or make your image more blue, while going right is going to make it more yellow or warm it up. Alright, so we also have the tint right below it, which is basically going to adjust the greens and the pinks or magentas in your image. If you notice that your image is too pink, well you're going to pull it towards the green. If you notice that it's got too much green in it, you're going to go towards the pinks or the magentas. So while these sliders are basic ways of adjusting temperature, we also have other ways of adjusting it starting with the white balance selector right here, where we can actually select a specific scene. Uh, and this works just like how your camera would work. You can either you leave it on auto and it's gonna try and guess. You can switch to a specific scene where it has these presets built in, like cloudy or daylight or whatever. Uh, and Or you can leave it as shot, which is gonna be whatever it was in camera. We have one other way of selecting white balance, which we can access by hitting W, and that selects our white balance selector right here. Now this eyedrop tool basically allows you to drop over an, a neutral tone in the image and it will automatically select a white balance based on that tone. Now a lot of people are confused with how this works exactly. You don't need to find an area that's specifically white. What you need to find is a target neutral. And what that means is it can be anywhere between white and gray. It doesn't matter how gray it is, so long as it's a neutral gray. So even a black that's not fully clipped, it has detail in it, is still going to allow Lightroom to choose the correct white balance. So in this scene, it looks like the most neutral object in this scene is probably her dress, which is actually a pure white. Be careful because a lot of dresses aren't actually white. Uh, we can drag it and drop it right over the dress, and it's going to dial in a white balance, which actually looks really close. It might be a little bit on the cool side, but we can always warm it up. All right, so let's move on. Now, our next set of adjustments are our basic exposure and contrast adjustments. And you'll notice that this is completely different in Lightroom 4 than it was in Lightroom 3. Lightroom 3 was using process version 2010, Lightroom 4 is using process version 2012, and it's designed now to basically mimic uh, a tone curve. It's basically designed to mimic a tone curve, but instead of having an actual tone curve that you're adjusting, you're just adjusting it with sliders. So here's how it works. If you guys remember when you went over the histogram, we briefly talked about how you can tell which areas each of these sliders is actually affecting. So if we mouse over exposure, you'll see in the histogram that we see basically the midtones is what is being most affected by the exposure adjustment. So if I move this up or down, it's going to adjust it brighter. If I go down, it's going to adjust it to be darker, but it's affecting the midtones first. Now we have contrast right after that, and these are actually meant to be adjusted in that order, basically from exposure, contrast, highlight shadows. I typically will still leave my contrast till the very end. But since it's next, we'll talk about right now, if you want to adjust the contrast up, simply just take it up. And what we've noticed in Lightroom 4 is that contrast works a little bit better in Lightroom 4 than it did in Lightroom 3. In Lightroom 3, we noticed that basically over skin tones particularly, whenever there's hard light or harsh light, um, or say mixed lighting, it really amplified the colors too much. And so it kind of created too much contrast, particularly over skin tones. 
the contrast in Lightroom 4 we've seen kind of works a little bit better. So it's a little bit safer to kind of adjust up. Now once we've adjusted our contrast, we move to our highlights. And highlights deals with, if we look in our histogram, kind of the highlight area where it includes a little bit of the upper end of the midtones as well as the lower end of the highlights. So we're kind of affecting that upper range. Our next option is shadows. And the way that works is if you want to adjust the highlights up to be brighter, you go up. If you want the highlights to be darker, you pull them down. So it's kind of a little bit different from version uh, 2010 where we were just adjusting all the sliders up from zero. Uh, now we're adjusting them basically from a midpoint either to darken them or to uh, brighten them by going to the right. So going to shadows now, I'm going to double click that to reset it. Oh, and by the way, you can reset any of these sliders just by double clicking right on that little slider arrow. So moving to shadows, we now affect our kind of the mid-tone shadow to our deep, uh, kind of the, the lower end of our deep shadows. So you can see again in the histogram exactly what's being affected. If I want to brighten those shadows, I'm going to shift and press up to brighten it up by 20 points, and it's going to pull the shadows up. If I want to darken them, I go the other way. I can also slide it or dial in a number just like you would with any of these other settings as well. Now with our whites, this is the uppermost end of the register. So this is basically the extreme whites, the specular highlights and everything like that. Once again, you pull it up to go brighter and you pull it down to go darker. With the blacks, this is the opposite end of the extreme dealing with the blacks of the black, dealing with the darkest shadows in the image. So again, we want to pull them up, we're going to go up and it's going to brighten those shadows. If we want to go and darken them, we're going to pull it down. All right, so process 2012 is much more intuitive as far as the way that these work, because back in process version 2010, these sliders were really more arbitrary. We had exposure and brightness, which really did almost the exact same thing, except exposure had a little bit more effect over the highlights. Um, we had adjustments like recovery and fill light, where it was just kind of arbitrary names for something that you know we kind of had to learn what it was for automatically. This is really more like controlling the tone curve, controlling the basically the histogram on your image via sliders, which makes it much more intuitive and much easier to use. All right, now last thing in this middle section is this tone where we have this auto tone button. Now if I select that auto tone, it's gonna automatically try and guess what the correct settings are for this image. Now, again, this is something I rarely ever use because auto tone really doesn't ever guess right. Anything auto pretty much doesn't get it where I want it to be. But just know that that is what it does. I'm gonna hit Control Z or Command Z on a Mac to undo that. And uh, let's go down now to our presence. And this is where you're gonna see another major difference between Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 3. Clarity has been adjusted significantly inside of presence to be much, much nicer and give you much less fringing. Fringing was that nasty blackened edge effect that we got back in Lightroom 3 when you dial up clarity too high when you have objects that are over bright highlights. So just like in this image we have right here, if we were to adjust clarity up in Lightroom 3, you'd start seeing black edges, really strong black edges up or around our subjects. In Lightroom 4, it works much, much better. We still have a little bit of the effect, but it's much more subtle than it was in Lightroom 3. And taking up to 100% still doesn't give us as much of that uh, kind of fringing effect as we got in process version 2010. It also has a little bit more of a contrast boost than it used to have. So it has kind of a more powerful effect over those mid-tone contrast levels. But just remember that sliding the clarity to the right is going to increase mid-tone contrast while sliding clarity to the left is gonna soften and decrease mid-tone contrast. The soften effect in, in Lightroom 4 is actually much, much nicer too. I can see it being much more useful as a, as a skin softener in Lightroom 4 than it was in Lightroom 3. Now, the last two sliders have stayed the exact same. It's vibrance and saturation. Vibrance basically is a more subtle adjustment that tries to basically retain your skin tones. So if we take vibrance up, it's trying to affect non-skin tone colors more than it's affecting skin tones. So we can kind of brighten up the colors of the image without affecting uh, areas where there's skin. Saturation affects the saturation overall in the image equally. So skin tones will get just as crazy much of a boost as every other setting or every, every other color would. So that concludes the basic panel. Now, if we want to reset any of these particular sections, we can hold down Alt, which will bring up the reset button on each of the sections. That's gonna be option on a Mac, by the way. And all we need to do to reset a particular section is just click reset. So if we click reset tone, it's gonna to actually reset all of the tone sliders down to blacks. So we can do that. If we let go of the Alt button and we click on reset down here, it's gonna reset everything in the image back to how it was as shot. Now last note, I'm gonna hit V just to switch my treatment to black and white and notice that the basic adjustments haven't changed. 
The only thing that's different in black and white mode is that we don't have vibrance and saturation adjustments, which should make sense obviously because there are no colors in the image. Let's hit V to switch back to color mode. I'm going to hit control one to collapse my basic panel and let's go on to the next tutorial where we cover the tone curve.